You all asked for it, and you all got it. We're going to do it today. Happy 412 day. Happy mock draft Friday. It doesn't have the same alliteration, but it still works. You know, I didn't even put it together. Like, this is episode 150 of the show. Mm -hmm. It's 412 day. It's like the numbers are just aligning for us to do a mock, like something special, like a mock draft. Nice, perfect round numbers, mm. even numbers. I'm a big fan of even numbers. On April 12th, 412 day, 2024, he's Chris Halleck. I'm Corey Chris, and of course, this is the Southside Beat, as we are every Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern on DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coming up in a few minutes, we will be doing a different look to the stream if you're watching live. And we have a kind of a different look on right now in preparation of that. But before we get to that, Chris, some some news today. Obviously, the pre-draft visits continue to roll in on the south side. We expected this one to happen at some point. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, today was the day for it. Mm -hmm. um, so Zach Frazier, definitely um, on the list. He's been on our list in the feed uh, just because we knew he was scheduled. It was going to happen. Um, it was a matter of when. Mm -hmm. Um, so obviously that was, that was today. Uh, but then also Cooper DeGene, the cornerback from Iowa, uh, very athletic, very twitchy, um, big time playmaker, um, both in on defense and as a returner, really intriguing player. Um, can't quite put your finger on what he's going to do in the NFL. Obviously he's got the size to play on the outside six, one, two Oh seven. That's a, that's a good size for an outside corner, but some questions about his ability in man coverage uh, seems like he's a better, uh, a better fit to maybe play on the inside, maybe safety, maybe do a little bit of everything. Um, therefore, even though he's probably way more athletic of a player to go higher than he, he might end up dropping a little bit just because where is he going to play? Yeah. And when, it, when we talked about it, I think earlier this week, when a guy doesn't have a, doesn't have a set position, you know, you, you kind of, it, it kind of, it's like, it's like, what do you do? Do you invest that like that, that high of a draft pick on a guy who, who isn't going to, okay, we got our shutdown corner or we, Oh, we got our left tackle or anything like that. You know, you got a guy who might do a little bit of everything might be a Jack of all trades, master of none. And that, right. that typically doesn't scream top 10 or top 15 pick. As we know, though, Mike Tomlin likes guys that can play positionless football. I think he's yep. used that phrase many a time, especially mm -hmm. last year, too. And Cooper DeGene certainly falls into that category. The 100%. Zach Frazier visit obviously is big. It's anticipated. It was going to happen at some point. And it counts as a local visit, important to note. So it's not towards mm -hmm. that that 30 allotted. But I think they have three visits remaining, a lot, like toward the 30, I, I think. Um, I think I counted it this morning in our updated list, which is in the most recent entry we have on the, on the pre-draft visits. And I think I counted 27 of the, the, um, of the ones that we have. And that's obviously not counting the local visits, which I have in a separate section. So you can see, um, but I think three West Virginia players, I think are in the local visits. That sounds right. And, uh, yeah. three West Virginia, two Penn state, two Pitt. I yeah. believe the count Something is like that. So, there's that, and that's going to factor into the draft plans in some way, and certainly it will affect in some way also, mm -hmm. as Lyle is a member for 11 months. Appreciate, we appreciate that, you. It will affect it, it would factor into what we are about to do. Now, as I set this up, I will be running this uh, mechanically. Chris is going to put on his best Omar Khan hat. I will be doing the best Andy Weidel hat, so to speak. <laughs> and without further ado, let's get this rolling here. Uh, so before before he actually hits play on it, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, kind of lay out what we're doing here. So there it is. Yeah, there. So here we go. So you can see the you can see what we're setting up. Yes, we're using the PFF mock draft simulator. To me, it's the mm -hmm. best one out there. Uh, a really important to note here, whenever you look on the right-hand side, first off, we're doing three rounds, mm -hmm. uh, so we're not going to do anything. We're not going to do seven rounds. Like, first off, we don't have the time for that. No. Um, but we're so we're doing three rounds. We're going to slow this down because what we want to do is we want to be able to, especially in the first round, we want to be able to see how the board is shaken out, how the top ten picks go, uh, who might be there, who's not there, who's falling, who's not. Where are their opportunities to trade up? 
Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to look at that. So that's why we have it on slow. And then we're leaving the settings how they are the, the remainder of the way. And the one thing I like here is because, you know, anytime I mention PFF, there's always PFF haters coming into the into the comments. So if you notice yeah. where it says public versus PFF board, it is skewed all the way to public. So this is not based just off of in terms of how the simulated teams are picking. Right. It's not just based off of the big board on PFF. This is across the uh, the Internet. Um, but these are the default settings for the mock draft simulator. Um, so we're going to, we're going to do that. Um, I'm excited, man. And then another thing is fun. whenever we get, whenever we get to a point where we're trying to make decisions, whatever, whether it's to trade up, whether it's to trade down, um, we're going to try to emulate what we think the Steelers might do, not what I, Chris Halleck want to do or what Corey Christen wants to do. We're we think we're trying to think based off of the intel that we have, right? And make decisions off of that. Before we do that, I need to go close my laundry door. Go for it, because it's really loud in there. We'll get started here in a moment once Chris gets back. As uh, Stephen A says, this is kind of our first time playing with this layout too. So we're going to full screen for those that are listening audio only. We're going to full screen this uh, mock draft simulator. Chris and I, you'll see us on camera the bottom left of your screen and uh we'll, we'll run it that way obviously if you're doing audio only you can't see any of this now we'll do our best to highlight the picks that are made um yeah. and obviously chris and i so chris and i ran through a dry run of this uh probably about an hour ago just to see how it would look and how it would feel um there were some parts where we would literally pause and say okay where do we feel we're at where do we feel so obviously omar khan and the steelers front office won't have the ability to do that mid-draft because the draft will be ongoing yeah. However, uh, as we all know, these first round picks take a long time to come through. So it's almost in that way, you know, and yeah. James asked any trade offers for 20. That's not to say we won't accept decline or field offers for 20 yeah. or any of the picks in the second or third round. Every every time every time you, you come up to pick in this simulator, you can look at where the trade is. and There's a little bubble for how many mm -hmm. teams are are potentially calling you. Uh, about making a trade so we're gonna we're gonna try to do this the, the best we can in terms of uh again either take possibly taking advantage of trading up if, if there's a guy we really want or we know that the Steelers really want and he's in range we might try to do a trade up mm -hmm. um if there's are no are no opportunities and things don't work out for us by the time we get to 20 maybe we trade back you know we see what our trade offers are and we tr possibly try to trade back Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll, we'll try to take advantage of that. Obviously we're not drafting necessarily for need, but we do have some positions as we sit right now, mm -hmm. 13 days from the draft that, um, we have some holes to fill. So we'll, we're again, trying to do the best we can and obviously don't fire us because we're not actually <laughs> the ones making the decisions here. Now, as you can see from this as well, the only team we have selected, uh, a couple are hidden in the bottom left, the uh, Falcons and Jaguars are, but the only teams we have selected are, are the Steelers. So the only team we're going to be drafting these three rounds for are the Steelers. So without further ado, let's enter. Let's get yep. into it. Let's start the draft. First pick, of course, is the Chicago Bears via the Carolina Panthers. So these will run probably a few seconds each. Yeah, um, you know, well, so there's Caleb Williams, number one, there's let, Jane Daniels, number two. Let's pause let's for a second. Let's definitely go, th go through the top 10 because mm -hmm. Steelers most likely are not trading into the top 10. Right. So let's see how the draft falls throughout the first 10 here. Drake yeah. May goes third quarterback, Carolina, mm -hmm. fourth pick, Marvin Harrison, Jr., wide receiver, Ohio State, fifth pick, Roma Dunsey, wide receiver, Washington, sixth pick, JJ McCarthy, quarterback, Michigan. Joe Alt, tackle Notre Dame goes seven to Tennessee. Off the board. Malik Neighbors, the wide receiver out of LSU, goes eighth to Atlanta. Chicago back on the clock at nine. And they will select Olu Fashanu, tackle out of Penn State. Okay. Tenth pick, Talis Fuaga, uh, tackle out of see. Oregon State. So there goes there goes it's a Steelers target for sure. Mm -hmm. Um so uh yeah, I don't again like we could have possibly called the Jets there. Uh, but after they got burned last year, I highly doubt the heck uh, that, that they would have yeah. accepted any kind of, especially if they knew we were, we were going to try to actually trade up to get like a, like a Fuaga or anything like that. So 
Right. Uh, that's one tackle specifically off the board. Um, so let's uh, go, let a couple more picks go and see how this we goes. will. It was, it was pretty predictable that the Steelers wouldn't have a chance at either Alt or Fashanu. No, uh, just based on their stock. The, the first, the top ten goes pretty predictably. Mm. Uh, obviously, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, JJ McCarthy uh, being off the board to quarterback needy teams. Uh, yeah. Harrison, Adunzi, neighbors, the top three wide receivers go. So pretty predictable top 10 here. Now this is where things will get interesting. Of course, going to 11 Steelers are 10 picks out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, some of these players that are targets are going to start to fall. So 11 is Quinion Mitchell cornerback out of Toledo. That's a player that, uh, the Steelers are pretty high on Mike Tomlin spent a lot of time targeting and, and scouting and talking to. 12th pick, Denver. That is Brock Bowers, tight end out of Georgia. That doesn't mm -hmm. really affect Pittsburgh too much. Oh, there goes Latham. J.C. Latham goes yep. to the Raiders at 13, the right tackle out of Alabama. So the Steelers are seven picks away, and a couple options are already gone as far as cornerback and tackle, mm -hmm. uh, and wide receiver for that matter too. So pick 14. Let's roll the Saints here. The Saints go... Troy Fontenau, the, the tackle out of Washington. So that's an option as well mm -hmm. off the board for the Steelers. This is where things kind of get interesting from the Steelers' standpoint. I have it paused right now. Yeah. And the Colts are on the clock at 15. Now, this is where I would say the conversation begins about, do the Steelers consider trading up? Are there players on the board that are so coveted, that are so high, that – we feel that Omar Khan in, in the front office would pull a trade for here at this position. Right. And so I, I'm already like Stephen a comes in here and, and says, uh, you know, trade with the Colts. Um, uh, the, the, here's the thing, like what, what players right now are worth a trade up. Mm -hmm. And to me, I don't, I don't see anybody left on the big. Now the one, the one thing I can't, the, the one thing that I don't like about the, the PFF mock draft simulator is when you pause here, you can't see the remaining players, but I've got the big board pulled up here. Yeah. Right now, the the the, the top tackle remaining is Amarius Mims. And uh, in my opinion, not just off of my own, um, off of my own, like, uh, you know, studying on him and everything like anything, that, yeah. but, but I don't see a, a trade up for Amarius Mims. Uh, that that's just he. There's he's too much of a project. Mm -hmm. Uh, in my like, there's not enough experience there. If he had put together a whole season or or more than that, if he had even put double the snaps that he had put, and, and with the same type of uh of tape that he put uh, that he uh you know uh produced at Georgia, then maybe maybe. And and Joshua Dobbs does bring up a good point here. Bengals may take Mims, and honestly, I think they do in this situation. Mm -hmm. I would be shocked if the Bengals don't if the Bengals passed on him all right so um yeah l let's let the Colts pick and the Seahawks pick okay the Colts let's see we're rolling it now Colts go for Dallas Turner edge rusher out of Alabama so okay. uh, a player the Steelers probably weren't targeting anyway and yeah. the Seahawks go with Terry on Arnold cornerback out of Alabama okay so four more picks until the Steelers uh I would well, three, say Arnold three picks uh, ahead yeah I would say Arnold would be an option, obviously a cornerback, a position of need. But uh, let's see what the Jaguars do here. This is where I would think if a trade would happen, somewhere in this 15 to 17 range would be the most likely spot. But again, I still don't think there's anybody worth going up to get. No. If like Fuaga or Latham fell or Mitchell fell to this spot, and that's I would why be more inclined to Jake Taylor Berger here has says, you know, Steelers are not going to trade up this year, more than likely trade down. I actually disagree. I think that if there are certain players that fall into this range that we're at right now <clears throat> in that 15, 16, 17 range, if Fawaga's there, if Latham's there, I think either one of those two guys, I could see a situation in which the Steelers were to trade up and get one of those guys, specifically yeah. Fuaga. Fuaga, I think, is the guy who they really, really love. They loved him at his at his pre-draft visit. So if that situation played out, didn't play out for us here, but if that situation does play out in 13 days, you could see the Steelers possibly trade up and get him. Yep. All right, let's roll the Jaguars here at 17. And with the 17th pick, Jacksonville selects Graham Barton out of Duke, the very versatile, you know, jack of all trades, master of none, offensive lineman. So yeah, that's a position he's gonna play for center, Jacksonville. Though. He's going right. to play center. So to me, that is the first center taken off the board. Right. 
All right, Cincinnati at 18. Here we go. Let's roll it. And the Bengals at 18 select Jared Verse, defensive Ooh. end out of Florida State. We so got Amari Smith still there. So two more picks now. I don't believe the Rams, unless they do, I don't, I don't believe the Rams are looking at Mims. No, right but now. but but uh, Brian Thomas hasn't been taken yet, has he? No, he has not. I don't okay. believe. So yeah. So I, I oh. think yeah. Let let's see, let's see what the Rams pick. Okay. Um, and then let's. Uh, and right yeah. now, nobody's jumped Pittsburgh or tried to nope uh, offer a trade here. So let's roll nineteen and get to the Steelers pick with the nineteenth pick. The Rams select uh, Layatu Latu, the edge rusher out of UCLA. So. All right. That leaves, and this is why I think we're saying maybe it's not so worth going back in the draft. Well, you could if if, if, if up, I mean, excuse me. Up. Right. Yeah, because if Mims were like, yeah, in a, in a possible trade down situation, Mims would have to be gone here. I would even say probably Cooper DeGene might have to be gone and maybe Nate Wiggins. Then I'd say maybe if that situation were to play out, then you take maybe Kool-Aid McKinstry. Uh, that could be a guy. But then anybody else, to me, it's worth trading down. I'd trade down to get Jackson Powers Johnson. I would trade down uh, to – here, scroll down a little bit. Yeah. Um, I would trade down to get Tyler Guyton. Uh, I'm really intrigued. Even though I my my pick here right now is Mims. Um. But yeah, let's see who's willing to make trades. So the yeah. Washington Washington Commanders, they're offering what pick? Uh well, this isn't them offering. This is just a team to pick with. Okay. Here are the teams interested in pick 20. Uh the Commanders at 36 and the Jets at 72. No, not not which, trading. Uh, I not, don't think they're no. gonna go that far back. So no, we're not trading out of the first round. So that raises the question here. Miami at 21, obviously not. Philadelphia at 22. Doesn't look like their needs line up with Miami. So Philadelphia probably wouldn't be tempted to move up. I don't think that Minnesota would be tempted to move up or Dallas. It's kind of hard to move back in this yeah. stage, I do believe. If 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 I would have if I would have possibly if we would have gotten a, a call here, scroll up a little bit. If we would have gotten a call to maybe move back one or two spots, then maybe I'm I'm want, wanting to trade back. Um maybe to like maybe calling Philly and see if we're, we're willing to trade down a couple of spots, see what we could do. Cause I don't want to tr- see some people are saying like j- trade down to like 24 to 27. See, here's the thing is that we can take care of tackle right now. And I think 20th overall for Marius Mims is not a reach. No, in my opinion. No, Um, I don't think that's a reach. I think Mims is a good pick here. Um, That's my opinion. What's, what's your opinion? Um, Here's and my- then and I already saw some people saying, just go ahead and take Mims. But yeah, everybody put in what you, what you want us to do. Corey, what are, what are your thoughts? So here's my thought process too, is I look at Cooper DeGene, Wiggins, Mims. That's three powers. Johnson's four. Now I know the, the medicals and everything. Thomas is five. Guyton six, Mitchell seven. I see seven players right here at pick 20 that, if the Steelers are interested in, genuinely interested in, they can move back to one of these spots and still get one of these guys that they're that they're scouting, that they're prioritizing. Right. Now, that being said, we know tackle is the biggest need. And Mims is right there. And then the next would be Tyler Guyton. And then based off PFS rankings, the next after that would be Jordan Morgan. I, I see a I see a huge drop off between Morgan and what Guyton and Mims are. Mm-hmm. And I still see Mims as more of a fit and as more of a, or as less of a project, I would say than Guyton. Now, the thing that intrigues me about Guyton is he just took his, his official visit mm-hmm. to Pittsburgh and Isaac Williams coached him up at the senior bowl. So they followed him really closely. Yeah. And of course the big 12 pro day. So they followed Tyler Guyton really closely. Um, but that being said, I, they went to Mims's pro day. Mm-hmm. They they pulled off the trifecta with Mims yeah. between pro day top thirty, um, pro day top thirty, and combine official. So it yeah. just seems to me like if the Steelers were in this situation, they would just take Mims. Yeah, let, let's go. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say go ahead and take Mims All at right. twenty with the twentieth pick. 
Chris and Corey acting as Omar Khan <laughs> are taking Amarius Mims tackle out of Georgia. So there's the pick at 20. Let's roll the rest and see what happens in the rest of the first round. There's Brian Thomas, LSU wide receiver at 21. Okay, and really quick, r- really quick. We we laid this out at the beginning. Mm-hmm. The Brobarian says PFF ranking. Is there any other game in town besides them? We, the, the simulation is based off of it is skewed all the way to the public side, not the PFF big board. Yep. So, yes, you see PFF's rankings here, but players are being drafted or te- the, like the simulation is going through based off more off of overall public big boards, not just PFF. So Correct. we're just using PFF's mock draft simulator. Yep. All right. Let's continue to roll. Now, you just saw yeah. Tyler Guyton go at 22. So yeah. imagine if if we traded back here to about the 24, 27 range. Mims would likely be gone here to Philadelphia, and then who knows if Guyton or Morgan would be here in this range. Because so, the Dolphins took Brian Thomas. Imagine that, Tyreek Hill, Brian Thomas. That's freaky. <laughs> All right, Minnesota 23, uh, Nate Wiggins, cornerback out of Clemson. Okay, that's another Steelers target. There's Jackson Powers Johnson, 24th 24 to, to the, the Cowboys. Cowboys. Yep. 25th pick to Green Bay is Byron Murphy, D, D- lineman out of Texas. Buccaneers take Adonai Mitchell, wide receiver out of Texas. Uh, the Cardinals take Cooper DeGene. There he is at 27. Yeah. Obviously, the cornerback out of Iowa. I'm going to keep this rolling here. I'm pausing just so I can get my words out. Right. Uh, Jerjon Newton, uh, D. Well, Wyman. Once we, get, once we get to the end of the first round, we're going to have to speed it up a little bit. Yeah, but, we definitely um, will. All right. So uh, let's continue to roll it here. Lions go with Darius Robinson, edge out of Missouri at 29. Xavier Worthy, receiver out of Texas, goes to the Ravens at 30. TJ Tampa, Iowa State corner at 31 to the 49ers. And then the end of the first round, Xavier Ooh. Leggett, wide receiver out of South All Carolina. First round. Goes 32. So there's your first round. Now, mm-hmm. again, with this whole concept of if the Steelers were to trade back, okay, let's just review this. And obviously this isn't one for one what's going to happen in two weeks. But there's Amarius Mims at 20, who we decided to take for Pittsburgh. Brian Thomas is certainly a target. So is Guyton. So is Wiggins. So is Powers Johnson. So is Mitchell. So is DeGene. So there you see from 20 to 27, you know, all but one basically Steelers targets were taken. So this is the crucial point right here for Omar Khan and Mike Tomlin, we believe. If they were to look back and say, well, we really like Nate Wiggins or we really like Adonai Mitchell. They could just take him at 20 or they can have their cake and eat it too. And perhaps move back a couple to get one of those guys. Yeah. All right. Let's uh okay. So when we when we ran this before, Zach Frazier went uh, like 39th overall. 39 to the 39 to the Panthers. He went. But I I again I don't see um I don't and, and Chris Chris B71 says, okay, we're drafting need here. Like, listen, need and best player available can go hand in hand. It doesn't have to be best player like and completely ignore position. They can go hand in hand. What you don't want to do is handcuff yourself and take a position. Like we're not going to trade up 15 spots here and give away a lot of draft capital to get Zach Frazier just because we need a center. Right. Like that that is whenever you're talking about trading for need. We're not doing that. So let's let's let's, let's let the board. Let's let it go through 40. Uh, let's okay. let the let the com- commanders pick 40th and let's see uh, who all goes. Okay. 33rd, Lad McConkey, first pick at day two. Chop Robinson, edge out of Penn State, goes to the uh, Patriots at 34. Cooley McKinstry, cornerback out of Alabama, goes 35 to the Cardinals. 36, Washington takes Max Melton, cornerback, Rutgers. Mm-hmm. 37, the Chargers take Jordan Morgan, tackle out of Arizona. So again, there's that tackle position coming off the board. Uh, which the Steelers are looking at. 38, Titans go Patrick Paul, tackle out of Houston. 39, Braden Fisk goes. uh, That's the D lineman out of Florida State, goes to Carolina. And then at 40 to Washington goes Ennis Rakestraw, cornerback out of Missouri. So the Steelers pick in, what, 12 picks here? Uh, 10 picks, 11 picks, excuse me. We're at pick 41, Green Bay. Uh, there are still several positions that need to address for the Steelers, obviously. And now let's not forget, there is a, another third round pick to play around with. Mm-hmm. Is this where we start to consider? I a still trade think it's, up? I still think for, for Zach Frazier, I'm so, I, like, I'm, that's, that's too high for me. 
Okay. Um, even though I could see Frazier going anywhere between like 35 and 55, like that range. Um, let's let's let it go. Let's let the next four picks go. Okay, let's and see, see what, what happens. Ha- what happens here? Green Bay at 41 takes Kingsley uh Suamita, the, the tackle out of BYU. I'm gonna botch that name. 42 Houston takes Peyton Wilson, linebacker of NC State. Okay. 43, there goes Zach Frazier. There goes Zach Frazier. Center out of West Virginia goes 43 in this mock draft to the Atlanta Falcons. So, looking back, would that have been a beneficial move? Looking Mm. at Zach Frazier at about 43 to have to give up capital to get him. Is that a worthwhile move? That that Trading up that far, you might have to give up the 84th pick. Um to go along with it. I highly doubt. I, 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 I doubt that you would be able to trade away 98 mm-hmm. and get that. Maybe if you could get away with that, then maybe I'd think about it, but I, I don't know if Zach Frazier is necessarily worth that, even though I do think, or I, I want to say think, even though I do know there are some on in, in like who are in the Steelers organization that really like Zach Frazier. I think they would love to get him. I don't know if they would love to get him enough to trade up seven spots to get him. Okay. Let's let this roll again. Pick 44, the Raiders select Michael Penix Jr., quarterback out of Washington. 45, he goes another quarterback, Bo Nix, out of Oregon to New Orleans. 46, Indianapolis takes Kamari Lasseter, cornerback out of Georgia. Now, remember, we picked a tackle in round one. Cornerback Mm -hmm. is still, of course, a position to need. 47, New York Giants take Roger Rosengarten, tackle out of Washington. 48, the Jaguars take Tyler Newbin, safety out of Minnesota. 49, Cincinnati takes Chris Braswell, edge out of Alabama. And at 50 goes Troy Franklin, wide receiver out of Oregon. So here's our board. I know what my pick, pick 51. is. 51. I know what my pick is as well. Um, so here's but, what we have. But this left. is this is really this is a difficult decision here. Yeah. This might be more difficult than the first round. Okay, go for it. I, I'm for me, I'm going Roman Wilson here. Mm-hmm. That that's but but Sandra still is really interesting here. Uh Persol is really interesting here. Um any one of those three to me is a great pick. And and I would even look at possibly trading back like two spots because you're guaranteed to get one of those three guys if you traded back two spots. I mean, here's your wide receiver board right now. And Wilson, Pearsall, Pearsall's a guy they've looked at. Yeah. Jermaine Burton, Keon Coleman, Jalen Polk, like any of these guys are pretty solid picks. Yeah. And this might be, like you said, where given what Philadelphia did, remember in this mock draft, Philadelphia went with the tackle, right? Just like Pittsburgh did. Yeah. So coming, coming back here, Philadelphia's two picks after they just got their wide receiver. So I don't think Philadelphia is going to be taking Roman Wilson or Ricky Pearsall. Here, take take it take it off receiver real quick. Just just go go back to regular big board. Okay, once oh, one second. Let me figure out how to do this. Okay, there we go. So right, they're saying, so, so they're saying we're still they're like I'm Roman seeing Wilson. like I, I'm seeing like somebody in the comments saying to better draft a linebacker. Like scroll down and find the next linebacker. Now, granted, uh, this is yeah. I mean, you got to go a ways. There's that Andrew was, Cooper, sixty second. With that a fifty nine ADP, that's a reach to me. Uh, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, to, like that's what I'm talking about. Like, like if, if the Steelers had a gigantic need, like we could go, like, like oh well, we could draft the Van Pran here. That would be mm-hmm. a gigantic reach, in my opinion. Yeah. So, like, no, like I, I'm, I'm, I, the, we're we're really looking at a situation in which, and again, this is not just because this is PFF's rankings. To me, if I don't think Roman Wilson's falling to 51, I also don't think San Russell's falling to 51. But if you have either one of those guys fall in your lap, yeah, it's like, what are you prioritizing? Are you pri- prioritizing corner or receiver? Yeah, now, I would think Steelers may may prioritize corner here. Um, for me personally, I like I like Roman Wilson, but I also have a hard time thinking a slot cornerback gets a second round pick. I agree with that. And given the heavy scouting they've done to Roman Wilson, yeah. I think it's just the logical pick here. Yeah. Especially I think so if wide too. receiver is not the pick in the first round. 
So I think the 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 choice we're going to make at fifty one is Roman Wilson. So yeah, let's make th- that pick. I think that's the that's the probably the consensus pick. But that was a really difficult decision because, like I said, it, you get. I mean, p- getting either Pearsall or Wilson at that at that spot is oh, oh, oh my gosh. And then look who goes with the pick right after Mike yeah. Sandra still. So yeah, there you go. All right, what what does Philadelphia do at fifty three? Philadelphia at fifty three takes Pearsall. So yeah. If they really wanted Pearsall, well, if they really wanted Pearsall or had an idea that the Steelers were going to take him, now obviously they just took Troy Franklin. The, the kind of catch twenty two with Philadelphia here is they pick one pick before the Steelers and two picks after him. Yeah, and they just went tackle, receiver, receiver. So yeah. that's interesting. I don't think that actually plays. I don't out, think that actually happens the, either. This but. is this is where this is where the 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 mock draft simulator. Mm-hmm. Um, May may um all right. Let's let some imperfect. players go off the board. Yeah. Now keep in mind we have not addressed center, we have not addressed cornerback. Yep. So we have to kind of pay attention here to what falls. But also and, interior interior defensive line. Uh, that's that's another need. Um, you could look at linebacker depending on who's there. Um, possibly safety, even though I don't necessarily think that's as much of a uh, uh as much of a need. Um, tight yeah. end is tight ends good to go. Running backs good to go. Uh, guard is good to go. Uh, we get where to took care of tackle. We got ourselves a number two receiver in Roman Wilson. I, I'm I'm feeling good about where we're at. Yep. We've taken two players we didn't reach for, and that both address needs. Yeah, and that, that's what we're talking about when best player available can go hand in hand with positional need as well. So this is I'm letting the draft run right now. We're about ten picks out from the Steelers. Um, and, and so far, you know, it's kind of been a mixed bag. Some wide receivers have gone. Some linebackers have started to go. There yeah. goes a quarterback, Spencer Rattler at 76 to Denver yeah. wide receiver. And we're coming up slowly here to the Steelers pick at 84. Uh, their first, of course, of the first round. So, you know, okay. Braylon Trice out of, out of Washington, the edge rusher, Jamari Thrash out of Louisville receiver at 81. There's another cornerback. And then the Rams take Blake Corn running back out of Michigan. So Ooh. here's where the board sits Ooh. overall going into the pick 84 in the third round. The top rated player available per, P- per PFF is Notre Dame tackle Blake Fisher. Who the Steelers hosted for a pre-draft visit. Now we've already addressed tackle. Do we take another one? I, I To me, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Now here's um, where the conversation begins around Cedric Van Pran. Yeah, because Cedric Van Pran is there. Um, you got to scroll down just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you got um, Jerry and Jones is there when we're talking about slot corner. I really like Jerry and Jones as a slot corner. Like mm-hmm. I really, really do. I think that's a... I think that's a guy to watch out for in the third round. I understand the Steelers might not have like hosted him for a pre-draft visit or anything, but when we're talking about a guy who can play inside, this dude knows how to do it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I want to take him at, at 84 though. I, I would be much more inclined to take Van Pran at 84. Right. I think um, this is where Van Pran would, would make logical sense. But again, man, like, it makes you think if Fisher was there, if it like, if you obviously knew how the draft board would shake up, right? Well. <laughs> like if, if, if there was knowledge that Fisher would be there at 84, would they rather go for the top cornerback or the top wide receiver? Like Brian, like, would you rather have Brian Thomas and Blake Fisher or Amarius Mims? And let's say Van Pran, or let's say, uh, who was your guy Jones? Like, that's that's the thing you kind of have to consider is all of this value when it comes mm-hmm. to these players as well. And of course, here's Malachi Courtley. And that's yeah. a player the Steelers have interested and in brought in for a visit. So mm-hmm. if Roman Wilson, let's go back up here. Let's just take a look real quick. 51, we take we took Roman Wilson. If we took Sandra still here, it would be kind of a no-brainer to take Corley. Yeah. At this stage, and, in my and, that, and that's honestly what what what, what would probably be the most yeah I, I would agree with that i would think that if 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 that situation if we would have taken sand was still there we got we got ourselves a slot corner and then if corley happened to be there then yeah that that to me is a slam dunk pick in terms because to me i think there's a much better chance that cedric van pran is available at 84 and over malachi corley i think Cor- I think there's a good chance corley come draft night come day two of the draft that corley's not there when the steelers pick at 84 right 
Um, right. I think there's a really good chance he ends up moving up boards over the next 13 days. So in this particular situation, just so we're not double dipping at receiver when we don't necessarily have to, I'm going to say Van Pran, but then, then there's Jeremiah, Jeremiah Trotter there. Yeah. Like that's, that's an interesting pick too. Um, linebacker to me is not nearly as big of a need. They got Patrick queen. They got Cole Holcomb, you know, pr- hoping that he's healthy, uh, a Landon Roberts, but you know, then it kind of drops off after that. Um, yeah. But just for, just for sake of, you know, putting a little bit of a time, time limit on this thing. Let's go ahead and go Van Pran. Yeah. Let's go Van Pran. All right. We're going to let this thing roll. There goes the Browns with Trotter at 85 right after it. And then Corley right there at 86, two picks after while this is running, I'm going to bring this comment up. Cause this is a good point. Chris B seven seventy one says Van Pran and Mims are projects. That is true to a point. Now take uh, spending a third round pick on, on a project is not a, is not a, you know, huge risk. Um, but, it, that that is a good point because Mims is very inexperienced. He doesn't have a lot of snaps. Uh, I mean, like only eight starts. You know that that is something that that would have. And there goes Jerry and Jones at ninety six. Yep. All so right. Now, Jer- now Jerry and Jones isn't there, but that I, it's a really good point that's been brought up because Marius Mims is far from a slam dunk to me. That is more if if the Steelers draft Marius Mims twentieth in the first round, I'll feel a lot better about that pick. Once I actually see him play yep. other, th- other than unlike, unlike last year when they took Broderick Jones, I thought I felt a lot better about that because it's a little bit more accomplished than Amarius Mims was. Yeah. Um. But Mims on the other, uh, like that's one of those picks where if you hit on it, that could end up becoming like one of your greatest picks in like the last 10, 20 years because the ceiling is massive for Mims. Yeah. All right. We're at pick 98. Yeah. Uh, the final pick of this third round. Um, and then we got to wrap this up. <laughs> and then we got to wrap up. Oh, for sure. This is kind of interesting. Like, yeah, there are, this is where you would take that best available theory. Yes. Um, and of course, Bo Limmer's right there. So if they didn't take Van Pran in the third, there's Bo Limmer. Yeah. Uh, right around that range. I'm a big fan of Dwayne Carter personally. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think he's really good. Defensive interior is a need. A few safeties here. Uh, Dadrell Taylor, uh, Taylor Demerson out of Texas Tech, Caleb Bullock out of USC, Sione Vaki out of Utah are there. There's mm-hmm. Maris uh, Leofu, who who visited with the Steelers at the Senior Bowl, uh, running back Ray Davis out of Kentucky. I know Michael Hall out of Ohio State has drawn some eyes. Um, mm-hmm. th- this is where you kind of can play with. Do you move back a little bit into the out of the top 100? You know, or is this the pick that you would use if you're Pittsburgh? when you look at this 84 slot or you look at this 51 slot and you move up with it, like to me, this is kind of a a tweener spot to be in. Yeah. I, I personally like Luafu there. Okay. Um, Let's just take him to move things along. Yeah. Yeah. Just because you, you take a linebacker. I mean, yeah, you'd like to have a corner there. Um, but again, this is again, it's a mock draft. We're we're trying to kind of go through and paint a picture for how things can look. We're not here to try to give our expert opinions and say right. like this is what the Steelers should do. That's not that's not what we're what we're doing here. Okay. And so. for PFF, yeah, th- th- we got a B plus from PFF. It's not bad. We right. I, I, I thought we did really picks. well. Yeah, I but thought we did really well. Mims and Wilson, a a, yeah. a- minus for Marius Mims and A for Roman Wilson. That's via PFF, of course. Um, I'm not, I don't get to B and Leafu gets a C plus. We kind of, we, we were kind of pressed for time. So we did Leafu just to keep things moving. But yeah, again, this is where this 84 and 98, this is where you look at and say, well, is Van Pran really worth taking here? Or is the gap between Frazier and Van Pran so large that they move up from 51? And look, we just looked at this, op- these options at 98. You know, obviously, Leufa we took to kind of move things along. But, like, okay, if they want to move up from 51 to go get Zach Frazier, mm-hmm. a couple, move up a couple of spots, and it takes 98, okay, it's not the worst thing. And then at 84, let's go back here and see who was taken, you know, just after. Can I go back into this I don't, I don't think I don't, I don't think, think you so. can. Oh, well. But anyway. So, you can, so I think that. the only thing I think the only thing you can do is pull up, and that's the other option down there is to pull up the entire first round. 
I think that's it. Um, Hi guys, I, we we kind of just took Lialfu to to move things along because we're running out of time. Here. Yeah, yeah, it's it's that that's yeah, we, we, yeah, we're running out of time. But um, and and Joshua Dobbs here says, you know, I prefer the the trade for Frazier, honestly. And listen, there's still a couple of weeks to go uh, before the draft, and you know, the Steelers are going to get a much better much better feel for Frazier after today. Anyway, uh, we could probably. Uh, um, uh, put this, put this back uh, where, there you go. yeah. But, uh, you know, we, um, again, it, it's, it's an exercise. We're not trying to, to, to say anything about like, oh, well we need to, this is what the Steelers should be doing. No, we're yeah. trying to go through, um, uh, make a mock draft so that we can, you know, play out scenarios so we can see how, the, how things might go for the Steelers when it comes to what's available when they're at 20, what's available as, a, as the 51st pick is approaching. Um, yeah. when, when does the, and, and again, based off of not just these mock drafts, but also things that I'm hearing that, that, um, uh, 35 to 55 range is about where Zach Frazier is going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, now that's a, kind of a wide range, but again, you're going to see, I mean, you, you're seeing some people go for, I think Mel Kuyper jr. Had Frazier going like 57th in his most recent mock. Mm-hmm. And then you could, but again, then again, Frazier, there could be one team that really loves him and wants to take him early in the second. So yeah. Yeah. Good exercise. We'll do another one next week. Uh, yeah. Three rounds took us through about 40 minutes, which I think is perfect amount of time. Yeah. Uh, takes us through day two of the draft and gives mm-hmm. us a good idea of how the Steelers might look at the board and look at their biggest needs and, how they might maneuver around. Obviously, we put our our, our best GM hats on given the situation. Try to. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, a mock draft simulator is not going to be anything close to. No. Or I shouldn't say that, but it's not going to emulate what's exactly going to happen in two weeks. But I, it's and exercise. One, it's good exercise. The one thing I really, really want to stress about mock drafts and specifically is – Anything after the first round, it really is. I mean, it, it's a it's a slippery slope that it becomes more and more and more of a crapshoot. Like every pick, it's like it, it it's like a fall off a cliff. Honestly, it, it's it's it really becomes more and more of a crapshoot because you just don't know what teams are thinking, especially after that first night of the draft, uh, how they're reevaluating things. It, it's it, it's a yeah. There you go. It's so hard to try to emulate that. And so that's why I don't hate on a lot of mock drafts just because it's almost impossible to guess, especially if you go, if you go like full blown seven round mock, like, come on. Yep. Like there are how many players in this, in this, that could be drafted in this class. Yeah. It's <laughs> hard to just, say for that. You're going to tell me that you're going to be accurate in the sixth and seventh round. Come on. Yeah. You never know. You never know what's going to happen in these drafts. That's why we do them. That's why, Again, exercise. Uh, that's why we're doing this to to give an idea to use our best knowledge as well to try to field that. And and I'm glad we got to do it today. We'll do another one next week. Teresa, that was both third picks. I mean, like like we can we could probably like we rushed that last one. We clearly. we did rush that last one, but but no, like we'll do the same thing. Like unless the Steelers make any trades. And, you know, possibly, you know, trade up or trade down or anything. But if they are holding the same picks, we'll do the same four picks that we did uh, last uh, this time. We'll do it again next week. Yes, we will. All right. Have a good weekend, everybody. Enjoy the nicer weather. It's warmer out, certainly. Uh, the Masters is on. Right so if, if you're a golf fan, enjoy the Masters. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, don't don't get too anxious over the Penguins, those that are invested. <laughs> <laughs> don't get too anxious do your best to, to withhold if you can hey oh, win, win in their end man win in their end that's right he's chris halleck i'm Corey chris and that was fun we had a good day today we hope you have a good day as well cheers everybody happy weekend we'll see you monday